Let's talk about the USWA-1, the OG variant of B&T's Universal Service Weapon lineup. Hey everybody, Sean Burrows with B&T USA. If you found this video, you're probably curious about this different looking CZ Swiss clone that you saw in a gun shop somewhere, or maybe you saw it online. Or maybe you're just into different, inventive, useful firearms like the ones BNT makes. In any case, go ahead and hit the subscribe button if you haven't already because more videos like this are on their way and I think you're going to find this interesting. So the USW sits in a category all of its own. And it was designed specifically to bridge the gap between pistols, specifically duty-sized sidearms and subguns. And I'm sure some of you are sitting there asking yourselves, is there even a gap between a subgun and a pistol? The answer, not anymore. We have the USW. It is designed specifically for law enforcement, low-vis soldiers, and intelligence officers that need a concealable pistol-sized firearm that's also capable of the precision and effective range of a subgun. So it looks like a pistol. It's holsterable and can be carried discreetly like a pistol. You can shoot it like a pistol. But this streamlined spring-assisted shoulder piece that sits folded discreetly against the strong side of the frame can be quickly deployed by pressing the release button with your trigger finger and locked into place with your support hand. This third point of contact gives the shooter an instant level of marksmanship capability rarely achievable by most pistol shooters in the calmest of circumstances, let alone high stress, high stakes incidents where something like this would be the most useful. The non-reciprocating hood on the rear holds the red dot nice and solid, allowing for fast, consistent follow-up shots in both pistol and shouldered shooting positions. This is the original configuration of the USW A1, which was equipped with an Aimpoint Nano. This optic has since been discontinued, so if you were to go out and buy one today in 2023, it would be with an Aimpoint Acro P2. The USW comes with 17 round magazines with plus two base plates, so you can hold a total of 19 rounds plus one in the chamber. Very generous mag capacity with the compact footprint that you'll have wearing it on your side, but BNT also makes 17 plus 13 magazines for holding a total of 30 rounds. They're nice to have as a backup reload mags, or if you're carrying the USW in a more expanded capacity. Because of the shoulder piece that folds onto the side, it doesn't just fit any old holster. So BNT makes two special retention holsters that work with this one with an optics cover one without i just opted for the one without so as you can see here on the usw holster i put a safari land qls clip so i can put it on my safari land belt it's got a very similar locking mechanism to the als system so i'm already familiar with releasing my competition gun with my thumb so it's already more familiar than i thought it would be and just take my competition gun off the belt and slide this one on. Now I'm ready to go. So other than the added bulk of this big piece here that houses the optic and the hinge for the stock, it's the size of a duty pistol. But I find that even this extra bulk in the back helps with recoil control. It's like a super big beaver tail and it helps managing muzzle flip when firing it in a pistol configuration. It's really nice for shooting just as a pistol. We've got the non-reciprocating red dot, so it's just right there. You can get back on target sooner. And when the muzzle wants to go up, it just goes right up against my hand. It's really a nice extra feature. It looks a little goofy until you start shooting it. Then you kind of start liking it. And as found on many modern semi-automatic handguns, it has an extra large trigger guard, so it makes shooting with gloves much less obtrusive. And since the rear of the slide is covered by this optics hood, making it almost impossible to charge it from the rear, the front slide serrations are very important, but it also has an extra flare to it just in front of the ejection port, so it makes it really easy 
to charge the gun from the front. Frankly, I wish more handguns just had this little flare component because it's really nice. And then as far as pushing it out to distance goes, I find it easiest just to keep my hands in the same pistol firing grip I otherwise would and utilize the stock for added stability. Now there is a place on the back to be able to put a little lanyard and hook a single point sling on the USW if you'd like. It did come with a piece of paracord already looped in. I took that off. I found it to be in my way. I've seen pictures of people replacing the weapon mounted light with the vertical foregrip and using it more in just sub gun mode. And I'll tell you that doesn't really excite me. Half of the reason you would want something like this is that you can carry it in a discrete holsterable format. Switching to a vertical foregrip essentially takes away that feature. Not only that, but it eliminates the ability to use a weapon mounted light. And I don't know why you would want to have something like this and not be able to illuminate whatever it is you're shooting at. I mean, if you want something like that, go get a sub gun. BNT makes amazing sub guns, not for much more than what the USW costs. So I found more uses of shooting this from a shoulder position as I've gotten to know it than I want to tell you about. Hard targets aren't necessarily far targets, so if any of you have gone to the range and shot those fun hostage steel targets where the plate bounces from one side to the other, um, they just got a lot easier with the USW. You can even do it one-handed, which brings up the next piece. Shooting one-handed, I'm able to draw this from a holster, flip the stock out and shoot it one-handed with as much stability and speed as I would get shooting a handgun with two hands. So if I'm wounded, holding a flashlight, holding a loved one nearby, I can shoot one-handed with a lot more precision, confidence, and speed. Speaking of loved ones, let's talk about home defense. In fact, in 2023, we hit a new benchmark. More households in the United States than ever have a firearm in them for home defense. And having something on an immediately accessible bedside tabletop style safe that's normally designed to hold a pistol, but when something goes bump in the night and it's 3.30 to 4.30 in the morning, it would be nice to have something braced against your body with a light on it and a non-reciprocating red dot that you can be more sure of getting your hits. The USW checks a lot of those boxes for me and you can safely lock it away and access it very fast when you need it while keeping unauthorized hands off of it when you don't need it. So the USW A1 has a double action, single action trigger. The hammer is covered by the non-reciprocating hood at the rear of the slide. The decocking lever is on the support side of the gun, just rear of the slide stop. As a threaded barrel and accessory rail, the stock release is just forward of the trigger guard on the strong side of the gun. Personally, as a private citizen who carries a concealed weapon regularly, on the rare occasion that I find that carrying off body is the most appropriate method for whatever activity I have going on with my family, I'd rather carry something like this in a compact sling bag than just a handgun because I'm getting somewhere safe and have the option of shouldering this and I can land more accurate shots with more consistency, less risk of collateral damage because of the added level of precision that the USW would give me under stress. So the USW concept has become one of my favorite firearms in the self-defense category. At first, when I was presented with one of these, I wasn't that impressed. It was a little weirded out, but that's because I didn't know what I was looking at. Now that I've had extensive time behind the trigger and experiencing how much my capabilities are expanded in such a small package, I'm a believer. Again, I'm Sean Burrows. If you have any comments, questions, or requests, just leave them in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe. More fun stuff like this is on its way. And I'll see you in the next video.